Welcome to Electron Online and here's our next example of how to do a word problem dealing with distance, speed and time. The example here is a boat traveling down the river, traveling a distance of 10 miles, turning around, coming back. Total trip takes 3 hours and 20 minutes. One difficulty here is that the river is slowing downstream at 4 miles per hour. So, the question is how fast can the boat travel or move while in still water? Okay, how do we do that? Well, first of all, let's define the velocity of the boat downstream as uh, being equal to, well, let's see here. Before we do that, maybe what we need to do here is say, let x equal the speed in still water. And that's then what we're looking for. We're then solving for x, and then coming back over here, the velocity downstream will then be x plus the speed of the river, which would be 4 and the velocity upstream would be x minus 4 because then you would be fighting the current. All right, so now we de define in terms of x how fast the boat can travel downstream, how fast the boat can travel upstream. If we now let the time downstream, so time downstream, let that equal to t1. Oh no, we don't even need to do that. Let's just do it like this. Time downstream plus the time upstream will equal 3 hours and 20 minutes. Of course, we want to convert that to a, a decimal or at least a fraction. And we know that 20 minutes is one third of an hour, so we can say that the time downstream plus the time upstream is equal to three and a third hours, uh, which is equal to 10 thirds hours. So we know the units is in hours, so we'll leave it like that. So the time downstream plus the time upstream is 10 thirds of an hour. All right, now we also have a definition for distance, which is equal to velocity times time, which means that time is equal to distance divided by velocity. So we can replace time by distance and velocity because the distance is known, 10 miles, and the velocity is expressed in terms of x, which is what we're looking for. So therefore, we can say that the time down is equal to distance 10 miles divided by the velocity down, which would be x plus 4, plus the time upstream, which would be 10 divided by x minus 4, because that's the speed upstream, and that has to equal 10 thirds of an hour, 3 and a third hours. Okay, now we're ready to solve this, and we've seen some examples of how to do that. We're going to multiply both sides of the equation by the lowest common denominator, which means we're going to multiply both sides by x plus 4 times x minus 4 times 3, and do the same on the right side, 3 times x plus 4 times x minus 4. That way we get rid of the fractions. Notice we multiply with the first one here. x plus 4 cancels out. 3 times 10 is 30, so we get 30 divided by, um, no, 30 times, not divided by, we're trying to get rid of the denominators. So the x plus 4 cancel out, so we're left with 30 times x minus 4. Plus, here we're left with 30 times x plus 4, that's because the x minus 4s cancel out. And finally, on the right side of the equation, the 3s cancel out, and we're left with 10 times x plus 4 times x minus 4. And that will then turn into a quadratic equation, which we need to solve. So let's go ahead and work out the um, multiplication. So we get rid of the parentheses. So here we get 30x minus 120 plus 30x plus 120 is equal to 10 times the product of these two, since it's a difference, uh, since we have x plus 4, x minus 4, that gives us the difference in uh, of difference of squares. So we have 10 times x squared minus 16. Here we see that we can get rid of 120s because it's plus and minus, so that's gone. And 30 plus 30 is 60x, so we end up with 60x is equal to 10x squared minus 160. And then moving everything over to one side to, um, to get to write that in a quadratic equation form, 0 is equal to 10x squared minus 60x minus 160. And finally, to make things easy, you can see that everything is divisible by 10. So let's move it over here, give ourselves some more room. So we can see that this is 0 equals x squared minus 6x minus 16. All right, now I think we can go ahead and solve that, probably by factoring. Hmm see minus yes I think we can so we can factor this so 0 is equal to x minus 8 times x plus 
2 because minus 8 plus 2 gives you minus 6 and minus 8 times a plus 2 gives you minus 16 so that's the proper way of factoring which means that uh, x minus 8 equals 0 or x plus 2 equals 0 which means that x is equal to 8 or x is equal to minus 2. Of course x cannot be a minus 2 that would mean that the boat has negative speed that doesn't work so we can get rid of this possibility and so the only possibility here is x equals 8 which means that 8 is or 8 miles per hour is a speed in still water 8 miles per hour which means that when it travels downstream it's 8 plus 4 or 12 miles per hour when it travels upstream it's 8 minus 4 or 4 miles per hour so on the trip up let's see if we have the right answers it worked this out so on the trip up velocity down let's see is equal to 12 velocity up is equal to 8 8 minus 4 is 4 that's wrong okay so if it's traveling upstream traveling 10 miles at 4 miles per hour that means it takes two and a half hours to come upstream and to travel downstream is traveling 10 miles at 12 miles per hour hmm so here let's find the time the time is equal to 10 divided by 12 so the time is equal to uh, 5 divided by 6 and so 5 divided by 6 that would be 50 minutes because there's 60 minutes an hour 5 6 of 60 minutes is 50 minutes that would be 50 minutes so add 50 minutes to two and a half hours, which is two hours and 30 minutes. And this is 50 minutes going downstream. Add two hours and 30 minutes to 50 minutes. That gives you three hours and 20 minutes, which is the amount of time given. So it looks like we did it correctly. And that is the correct answer. Again, real quickly, you define X as a speed in still water, which then gives you an expression in terms of X for the velocity downstream. For the velocity upstream then you realize that the total time which is the time downstream plus the time upstream is three hours and 20 minutes then you do, then you replace the expression for time by what time is equal to which is distance divided by velocity and so distance divided by velocity in each case so this would be downstream this would be upstream and then you solve the quadratic equation and that's how we do that